Hi, welcome to the podcast for Eden Rock today. Today we will be joined by Mrs. Akta, Mrs. Sajid, and Miss Francis. We'll be starting off with reading the poem Eden Rock. They are waiting for me somewhere beyond Eden Rock. My father, 25 in the same suit, of genuine Irish tweed, his terrier Jack, still two years old and trembling at his feet. My mother, 23, in a sprig dress, drawn at the waist, ribbon in her straw hat, has spread the stiff white cloth over the grass, her hair the colour of wheat, takes on the light. She pours tea from a thermos, the milk straight from an old HP sauce bottle, a screw of paper, cork, paper for a cork slowly sets out, the same three plates, the tin cups painted blue. The sky whitens as if lit by three suns. My mother sh shades her eyes and looks my way over the drifted stream. My father spins a stone along the water, leisurely. They beckon to me from the other bank. I hear them call. See where the stream path is. Crossing is not as hard as you may think. I had not thought that it would be like this. Okay, so to summarise Eden Rock, um, there's an encounter between the speaker and his parents. Uh, it's implied that the parents are dead and it could also be suggested that the speaker is close to death and he would like to rejoin his parents in the afterlife. So moving on to the context. So Causeway himself had actually lost his father when he was seven years old and his father was um, had passed away because of um, injuries from the First World War. Now Causey, as he grew older, didn't actually get married and he kept himself very private and though he was told many times to write an autobiography about himself, he, ch he chose not to and he stated that all his information about himself is actually written in his poems so if you read them you'll learn a lot more about him. Okay, let's take a look at the themes. Um, so identified within the poem, there could be the um, relationship between a parent and child. We've got the theme of childhood, um, nostalgia, um, religion, and also um, the family love that can outlast separation as well. So now we're going to move on to the language used in the po poem that shows us exactly how um, he feels in here. So to start with, he begins his poem by talking about his mother and father and he states that my father who's 25 in the same suit of genuine Irish tweed his terrier jack when he's stating this he's giving us a range of adjectives describing what his father looked like and the visual imagery that you can see you can see of him obviously shows that he looked up to his father he studied his father so his father was someone who was very um who was highly valued and a big part of his life um and it's the same with his mother so when he talks about her as well, he actually refers to exactly her outfit, other than the spriggy dress, drawn at the waist, even the way she's tied it up, the way her hair was. And again, it gives us this understanding that maybe he looked in, he, he cherished his memories and he enjoyed the time that he spent with them. And for him, even as an elder, as a grown up, he still remembers them. And again, the language he actually uses is quite simple. And it, it makes you think that maybe as a, as a grown up, he's able he's still looking back at their memories because they were the only memories he's fond of and he doesn't maybe enjoy life because their his parents are not around um and then go on looking at um the theme of nostalgia as well um he the speaker uses insignificant um items um which could appear in, insignificant to the reader however um they seem so important to him mm -hmm. and this is him reflecting back on um, memories with his parents Okay, and there's also a peaceful nature to the language he uses when he's describing his parents, which show that in, uh, they're in a tranquil place, which uh, we assume is heaven. And that's what makes him uh, drawn to them much more because he feels they're at peace and he's not whilst he's living, which makes him crave death. Mm -hmm. um, and saying, talking about the, the peaceful nature, you obviously got the quote here, over the drif drifted stream, a stone along the water, and it just makes you think of days when you're going out for picnics and you're sitting around the pond or you're sitting on the grass and it's just very calm. And it's them little moments that make the rest of your life that you always look back to and you always want to do again. Um, and for him, obviously, it is a big memory for him because it reminds him of the days where he was young, he was a child, he was actually happy for once. Um, can I also, sorry, can I also add um, in terms of the biblical imagery, um, they talk about the white cloth that's um, put out when they're um, about to have a picnic. And he's actually talking about the past 
but you could also deem that he's maybe talking about the future and how he craves for that moment and maybe his mom setting up that picnic in the future as in in heaven waiting for him to join them for that picnic so it could be quite so, symbolic yeah there. so the color white is symbolic in that sense for for heaven which obviously represents purity as well uh, misty do you want to say anything yeah alongside that um you know eden rock itself um you've got the mention of the three sons um, as, as mentioned earlier the drifted stream these are all um references to stories in the bible so um that's where we see that biblical imagery as well um, that could signify um that Causey was quite a religious person and he did believe that his parents were uh had passed away for a reason um, and that's why at the end of the text, when he says that he did not feel it would be that way, um, oh, yes, is that he says, I've not thought that it would be, be like, like this. this. Yeah, he may be suggesting that he's contemplating suicide, even though he was religious, he was contemplating it, um, which shows that he's in a battle within himself. He wants to be with his parents, but he doesn't want to um, not follow the rules. I oh guess God. we could look at the structure as well, couldn't we, yeah. with um, that final sentence, um, short sentence of the poem. Um, it really shows his uncertainty surrounding his decision, whether he wants to stay in this life or join his parents in the afterlife. Yeah, and there's definitely a tonal shift between the last line that's singled out and the rest of the poem. So the rest of the poem is in um, quatrains and the final um, stanza is three lines and then it goes on to the single line which represents the tonal shift and also um, the fact that he's changed because the first half of the poem focuses more on his parents and happiness and the second part of the poem focus, focuses more on how he wants to join them, how he wants to be with them and that he's finding that really challenging. And then that last sentence, like you said, it's the impact it makes. It's like it's it's like he's declaring something, but it's not so explicit. So it's making it's leaving us as the readers trying to figure out whether he is going to obviously do something to try and join them and hurry that process or not. Um, so um, then obviously for this, you need to look at how you can compare it to other poems. So one of the poems that you can compare Eden Rock to is the poem Follower. Now, Follower is obviously about a young boy who looks up to his father, follows him around throughout the whole poem because he inspires to be like to him and he's actually impressed about how, how well his father works and he talks about all the detail of how his father's um, shoulders had globed around and it's very similar to Eden Rapp because of the fact that the speaker here also um, shows how much he loves his parents and how much he has obviously spent time, how long he spent time with them and he talks about them in a lot more detail as well, just like the way follower is. So you obviously got that parental loan, that relation between the, the child and the parent in um, follower. Um, and then you could also link um, Eden Rock to Letters from Yorkshire, mm -hmm. um, the poem written by Dooley. Um, it could be used to describe her, the distance between her and her father or between her and a friend. So you can see that um, reoccurring theme of distance mm -hmm. there and separation. Yeah. Um, thirdly, you could compare it to Before You Were Mine by Carolyn Duffy um, because of the fact that um, the narrator talks about how uh, her parents, her, her mom's life was before she was born and um, the narrator in uh, Eden Rock is talking about his life after he's lost his parents and how he craves to be at, um, to go back in time and that's sort of like what the narrator before you were mine wants for her mum because she feels like she's ruined that for him mum. And that is all for today. Thank you and we will see you soon.